We were sitting in the office, me and our U.S. expansion manager, and someone was telling me that five shops, our supply had terminated. So we picked up the phone and we started calling these locations. And we were right. Someone was doing something in the background. Luggage Hero is under attack. A new competitor has raised a lot of money and they're going for Luggage Hero. This is Raw Startup. Let's have a look at what Luggage Hero is. So Luggage Hero is a marketplace where travelers go to a place to store their luggage. So we basically work with hotels or hostels or local convenience stores or even souvenir shops, bike rentals, whatever it is that has free capacity to put a piece of luggage for a couple of hours or a day. Now let's go back in time. It was April. It was just around Easter. And we had just like, we came out of the pandemic. We were all excited about the venture in 22. We had relocated to Miami uh, to set our base there and expand in the US market. And then suddenly we just saw shops terminating with us. Something is up, this was not normal. Usually shops would just disappear, but not now, they were actually terminating. Shops never really terminate with us. If they die of some reason, go out of business, we just don't hear from them. That was not the case here. We were sitting with five terminations, which all looked the same, even though the locations didn't have anything in common. So we started dialing the locations in New York. We got a hold on these shop owners and they were all really sorry, but they had to take the other offer. Okay, so there's another offer. The other offer was to go exclusive with our US competitor in return for money. We didn't know it at that time when all this was going on and we couldn't really figure it all out because it didn't make sense. But our U.S. competitor announced one week later from the terminations of shops that they had raised a Series A with a top tier investor in San Francisco. The competitor was trying to corner the market, making it really hard for any other competitor in the market. Interesting strategy. But will it work? This was a huge round that really could change the market. $12 million, quite a lot of money. That was pumped straight into our competitor in the US. And compared with us, we have raised in total over the time, $4 million. That can be a problem. Suddenly you're way behind the competition and the people around you are getting worried. Everything was heating up. All our investors was writing us, our board was writing us, our shops was writing us. Everyone was like, what's going on? And things are going from bad to worse. So within a couple of days, we had lost 20 shops. Within a month, we had lost 100. They were cherry picking, they were hand picking the very best locations around the cities. This is not good. With no supply, there's no product, and they're starting to see that in the numbers. It did have an impact on revenue. It had impact on operations. It had impact on our expansion plans. Everything had to change from that day. This is tough for any founder. You spend years on building something, suddenly something comes from the outside trying to kill you. When you put everything in to build something, and we have put years into this, and someone has raised money with the only reason to try and kill you and get you out of the way, then you feel like it's a threat. Now this is where great founders bounce back. Show the world what they're made of. So how did you bounce back? So first of all, we tried not to lose our mind. We had to come up with a plan so we didn't jeopardize our own financial situation. It was something happening outside of our control and it was hard to really do anything about because we didn't have that kind of money. They doubled down on what they could control. Pretty smart. You can try and control your own feelings. You can control what the story has to be in your company. How are you going to be talking about this in your company? We didn't call them shitheads or idiots or bastards. We decided to call them colleagues. Our good colleagues in the industry are making some noise. We have to deal with this. We have to, to see the consequences of this and work through it. So what we did in those areas where we saw significant revenue drops was obviously focusing on getting our own supply up and running in those areas. So we actually changed some of our strategy for a short time to actually make up for the lost supply in those areas. So we went out and we started using one of our data algorithms to calculate how much we have lost in an area and then make up for it again in new supply. That's the mission. That's what we can control. And we're going to go after it. How do you beat or even survive when your competitor has a lot more money than you have? The best thing you can do in a situation like that 
is to become profitable because it's hard to kill someone who are profitable. And we were not profitable at that point. We were not. We were burning money. This is also smart. It becomes a lot harder to kill Luggage Hero if they're profitable. Now let's have a look at the competitor's playbook. One thing is that our competitor are using a playbook which is known within marketplaces. You go out and you ask for exclusivity and you buy the other marketplace supply, basically, and then you kill them. The only issue with that is that it's not the impact on doing that is not equal from one industry to another. So in our case, our supply is storage. It's not pizza. It's not your favorite pizza from that corner shop. So it means that if you buy my supply and that's my favorite corner shop, you also buy my demand, you buy my users. But in our case, we had the users still coming in in the same numbers. So we just needed to put up new supply. They didn't care. As long as they could store it in that area, we were fine. So the users didn't really care about the supply. They just need a place to put their luggage, didn't care about the place as long as it was nearby. I think the competitor might have misread this marketplace. This marketplace is not driven by supply. Supply is replaceable. This is a big bummer. They spent a lot of money on buying supply, thinking that users would move over, but users didn't care. So now you wasted a lot of money locking in supply that is very replaceable. If you're building a marketplace, you really need to understand what drives the market. Is it supply or demand? Most markets are driven by demand, not supply. Luggage Heroes just started finding new supply and sent their users over there. You also have the power because then you just turn the demand to new supply and the new supply we onboarded were happy about all the traffic. They got. And now things are really moving in the right direction. We were lucky that we were going straight into high season. I mean, we were seeing catch up effect in the travel industry like never before. In some areas, we didn't have enough capacity to make up for the demand. So that was a good situation. And so we just kept expanding. We kept focusing on what we could control. And we actually saw that a couple of months after we saw the dip in, in revenue, we were making up for it. And, but more importantly, we were actually starting to see that out there was the end goal. It was possible to reach that end goal becoming profitable. It even looks like some of the supply is coming back. I think what's What's going on was that our competitor was doing a really good job. They were building up a lot of supply. They were building so much supply. So when the guaranteed money was running out, they were not seeing the same traction anymore as they had before because the supply was just so big. And that made them turn back to our platform. This is another challenge with building a marketplace. You have to balance supply and demand. In this case, it looks like the competitor had too much supply. There wasn't demand for it. They had totally misread the marketplace. They thought they could just lock in the supply and demand would come. Doesn't work like that for this market. For Luggage Hero, it was time to become profitable, the ultimate protection against a well-funded competitor. We had set plans that the first month that we would be a profitable bottom line would be May 2024. So when we were done with, with April 2023, we we're just looking at each other saying, what the fuck? Did we just make it already? And uh, yeah, uh, we've been making profits ever since. Incredible story. This competitor forced them to become profitable and now they're in a much better position. So what did you learn here? We need to have a better feeling with the market. At that time, because we just came out of the pandemic, we hadn't really been out in the cities. We hadn't really talked so much with our shops in one-to-one. -one. And I think looking back at it, if we had been in some of the, our cities earlier, uh, we have been able to pick up on what was going on and being able to probably prevent some of these things. They were totally blindsided by this competitor. And the big learning here is that they should have known their partners, their supply better. Finally, could you actually be in a better position than the well-funded competitor now? They are burning money and they are burning a lot of money. When you raise $12 million, you're not asked to keep them in the safe. You're asked to, to go out and grow or die. So it means that they have to invest everything on growing and growing is expensive. So we could end up in a situation where because of the market situation and the macroeconomics and everything, they have to either make a down round or raise some more money, giving out more equity that could have an impact on motivation as well. I think there, there are a lot of different factors to take into consideration, which we are not dealing with. Suddenly, the tables have turned, and now it could be that Luggage Hero is in a much better position than the well-funded competitor. You know what to do. Now stop watching, go build something.